the strikeout stays at six. Gibson Park tonight, one of several opportunities that came the way that weren't taken over the course of the afternoon. But it's job done for Ireland. They've kept Italy scoreless for the first time in the history of any meetings between these two countries. And they are two from two as they continue this quest for back-to-back -back Grand Slams. Full time at the Aviva Stadium. It's finished Ireland 36, Italy nil. Fellas, thank you. So, Matt, I think we said men against boys at half time. We're saying something similar at full time. Yeah, 36 nil. It's very hard to uh, complain. The, the game got scrappy there as the replacements came on in the last 25 minutes. But, uh, you know, we've got to remember there's six British and Irish Lions not even in the match day 23, and they can still put 36 nil onto the Italians. Some very positive performances from the younger players, players that that aren't backups but are still finding their feet at the international level. Crowley did a lot of good things, kicking game still not quite where it needs to be. That man, Harry Byrne, did very well. Uh, the, the, the whole back row, the Irish back row and their replacements were, were very, very good. That big fellow there, you know, Joe had another very, very powerful game. <laughs> Big Joe, yeah, <laughs> little Joe, depending on where you put it. Yeah, but uh, look, it, it wasn't a spectacular game. Against Italy, it's very hard because they're so scrappy. And they, you got, we've got to say, the Italians were, were really, really poor again, which is very, it's, very sad to say. Probably expected a bit more from their attack. I don't know did Ireland just shut them out, Shane, but regardless, they haven't scored. I thought the defence was, was quite promising, though. They really got off the line. They were very committed. And when Ireland were playing wave after wave, um, there wasn't massive space on the edges. You know, Ireland maybe weren't holding in quite as well, um, but they were making good reads. So, um, yeah, very disappointed in the offensive side of the ball for Italy, but defensively there's some shoots of um, hope there. Can you say, um, and you can say that after conceding six tries. I think so. You're, listen, look at the team you're playing against. I think the second half was somewhat anticlimactical. Um, Ireland did lose their shape a little bit, um, and as a result they started pushing the passes when it wasn't quite on, sort of making poorer decisions. Mm. Um, Harry Byrne came on and looked good, but I don't think he was helped at the stage of the game he came on because he, there just wasn't enough continuity at that point in the game for him to really put his uh, mark on the game. But his individual moments, and I'm going to look at a few of them later on, I think were pretty good. Yeah, I, I think we need to expect a bit more from Italy there too. You know, there zero points for the first time in history. Um, you know, they, they created some good stuff against England last week and I thought they'd bring more today, but they had nothing in attack. Defensively, they were poor in the first half. In the second half, they were a little bit better, which, you know, stifled Ireland a small bit. But, you know, that's, it's back to the same old Italy again, I'm afraid. And what would you say of Ireland, Rob? Uh, I thought they coughed up a little bit too much possession in the first half, maybe just an over-anxious trying things. Um, but, you know, considering the amount of changes were made, that, that, that was a very good performance. And some of the new guys coming in, they did well, they enhanced their positions. Um, so I think all in all, it's a good day for Andy Farrell.